blaring out show this is the blaring out with eric blair show and today i'm here with founding member of dead z elijah blue so how's your day been going for you so far you know it's good dude it's just another day in los angeles you know living the dream yeah <laughs> are you living the dream do you consider? i mean yeah dude i'm i i i don't um i i think i always have been you know i mean i i don't think that living the dream doesn't mean a flawless existence i think mm -hmm. living the dream means just like you know you're living the life that you're supposed to live and you know you're doing the things that you're supposed to do and and you know you're having the peaks and the valleys that you're supposed to have so i, I think that that's uh you know, I mean, look, we live in Southern California. Yeah. It's sunny every day. You know, it's this is this town is the object of envy and you know, covetousness of the entire world. You know, so I mean, and 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 here we are. So a lot of stuff I read about you, I notice that you're very in touch with reality. Yeah. You don't you don't live in a fantasy world at all. Yeah, man. I I I, I try. I guess because for me, I, I've already experienced and live lived so many of the trappings you know a decade before i even picked up a guitar you know so i mean it, for me it's you know for whatever reason i was already initiated um in in the sort of path of excess and 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 what that does and doesn't bring you know i, I think in the end the final sort of analysis is that i was able to find a sort of way to where i could sort of have a foot in each world and 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 always you know like uh you, you got to buy your own milk. You know, you you got you got to know how much gas costs. Like you you, you got. I see people who you, you don't want to live like in an ivory tower. What was your inspiration for picking up your first musical instrument? Well, I, you know, I just had seen so much. You know, idolatry and and um, I associated that with what 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 I was supposed to do. It just it just all felt natural to do that. You know, just that's what looked cool to me is seeing uh, uh you know someone with a guitar and all the sort of images of the 70s rock bands that you know first sort of i was exposed to early on so you know i i had a couple guitars in my possession i, I didn't play them for years and one day i just started playing them and, and it just sort of came natural to me i think that it wasn't because i my parents or any of this other stuff that you would think well that's why you know, I started playing guitar. I just I started playing guitar, and I was and I was good at it, and I liked doing it, and and I just continued to do it until eventually I found my own sort of style. You know, your mother is Cher, yeah, and your father is Greg Allman. Uh huh. What did you learn about music from them? I don't know how much I learned about m music from them. From my dad, you know, I just learned from a lot of watching the Allman Brothers play what it's like experience greatness you know with my mom it's more you grow up in that way so you're really exposed to culture and a lot of it you know and there's no real boundaries and so that it's good and it's bad being exposed to a lot of those environments i say i'd say is the most influential thing that you know that um growing up uh you know with 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 two uh parents who who are entertainers um provided me what does the term undercore mean and how does dead z reflect that in sound and look undercore to me is that same sort of thing that i guess you could call what the stooges and the velvet underground were it's not so much a style of music but more like whatever the current complete edge of you know the musical boundary is that 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 place that is the eternal edge it's you know it's, it's there's always whenever whenever that edge gets sort of diluted and you know those things become mainstream well then there's another there's a new edge you take your career into your own hands when you sort of do that but that's what the stooges did that's what the velvets did that's what the ramones did so that's what i was going to do you know but right now i guess what i'm into is like writing great songs you know uh at this very moment like that that's that's what i've sort of had the realization of it's like you know what what league what league do you want to play or you want to be a successful band or you know do you do you want to you know, have songs that people will be listening to a hundred years exactly. from now. Exactly. With doing the Dead Z records and just the whole experience, you know, has definitely made me see what my potentials are and, you know, what my plans are and, and you know, uh, I'm going to be making a solo record. And with, with what I'll 
be doing in music. I, I feel like I'm just getting sort of warmed up, and and I, and I feel like the sort of legacy of Dead Z in the last ten years is a great way to sort of you know come with a nice amount of credibility. How do you feel Phantasmagore differs from Commencement? Uh, I think it's a more straight kind of rock album. Um, it's a little bit more up-tempo. It's just us sort of growing, you know, better songs, uh, you know. I think all, all together, you know, from start to finish, um, a little bit more depth in the sound, a little bit more, you know, reverb, and, and a little bit more... Um, you know, there's a sterility to commencement, which is which is good. It suits commencement well, but this one, you know, fantastic. Where we got in a little bit more of uh, textures. Tell me about the cover art. The concept for the cover uh, was just something that was very stark and a nice statement. You know, it says an idea. It says an attitude. It says, you know, like we don't give a fuck and we're gonna do shit our way till the end. Yeah. Um, and so. You know, I, I think that the cover's tough as nails. We took one, bef we took a first one, and it wasn't the right one. And then we, at the last second, found this girl on MySpace, who 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 was a fan of ours, who did all these weird little photo shoots of herself. At three in the morning, all of us <laughs> went up to her loft on on you know wherever it was on the corner of like Franklin and La Brea and Hollywood, and and we took that shot against a black psych, um, you know, against a back background, and then you know we went in and did sort of you know all the the different coloring and turning the stuff white you know we were inspired a lot by the transformer um album cover obviously which yeah. is probably you know we, we I, i'm inspired by the uh, art the covers that say you don't have to listen to the record man you just look at the cover and you get you, you know what the person's trying to communicate what inspired babes in the abyss well babes in abyss you know is a little bit of just you know girls that i know from the neighborhood um that i grew up with and sort of seeing how distorted that consciousness is and i always like to sort of take my knowledge of you know history and the underworld and all these things and and, and just take their sort of uh, you know take their existence and essence and like funnel it through my lyric process and so what came out was 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 babes in abyss and it was all about you know sort of these superficial you know women and 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 what'll happen in the underworld uh you know when when their sort of heart is being weighed against the scale you know, i took the sort of egyptian underworld scenario and 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 then place them in it and and the outcome is not good for them you know so it's a <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of topical songwriting, but I mean I, that's my job to do that. I, it's yeah, my job to be an antagonist. To, uh, to be an antagonist. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, because totally. well, you're standing up. You're taking yeah. a stand, especially where you are in society, because a lot of people, you know, look up to you and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're in a position where you, you have the strength. Credible. To, yeah. yeah, to stand up and say, "Look, this is wrong." Yeah. Okay. Or I mean, it is, it is what it is. I don't know if it's. I mean, part of me, it's also like the Warhol things coming true. It's like there's two ways to look at it because I, I'm sort of, you know, I, I'm I'm in both worlds too. It's like since since I have since I have substance, I'm able to sort of float through the superficial without really getting tainted by it. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I think that that's part of life too. You know, um, but not in the way where where there's nothing. If there's nothing there beneath that, then it's like not cool. You know, it, 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 I think that so many of those um, sort of the women who, who are now preaching to the sort of rest of the world and the rest of the sort of next generation of, of people in America um, and, and the sort of obsession with materia materiality. I mean, I guess that that's, you know, there's not a lot of people who can stand back and be like, you know what, that's not for me. I mean, most people are going to fall in line with what they think they're supposed to like. Well, the media... Yeah is is i mean because the, the the you know i'm sorry but i mean there's a point where we need to be responsible for what we're teaching the Absolutely, kids dude. and i'm not saying that you know punk rock's bad or whatever i'm just saying uh, materialism and consumerism for the sake of consumerism and materialism yeah. is pathetic it's, it's the honey trap it's the they, they're distracting us while they're doing all their evil exactly shit. you know it's like and 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 the smart people see that and 
you know, I, hopefully the rest of the people will see that at one point too. You know, I don't expect America to like turn into Europe or Canada anytime soon, but it, you know, it, it, it is sort of, uh, it's really des. There's a desperation with people's want and covetousness for the things that they think are going to complete them and that they don't have and that they see. And then you see the people who have it all who just want to kill themselves. And so they do. So it's just stuck in this permanent thing of never having any, any satisfaction but always just reaching and it's just pathetic. And exactly. so the people, yeah. that, the people that are supposed to, you know, the, 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 the minstrels and the, you know, and the... Um, Pied Pipers. You know, the Pied Pipers of the world should should go and, and, you know, write their tales of these times. And so that's what I did, you know. <laughs> you know, you, you, you got you to know how much gas costs. Like, you, you, you got I see people who, you, you don't want to live like in an ivory tower. What was your inspiration for picking up your first musical instrument? Well, I, you know, I just had seen so much, you know, idolatry and, and um, I associated that with, what 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 I was supposed to do it just it just all felt natural to do that you know just that's what looked cool to me is seeing uh, uh you know someone with a guitar and all the sort of images of the 70s rock bands that you know first sort of I was exposed to early on so you know I I had a couple guitars in my possession I, I didn't play them for years and one day I just started playing them and and it just sort of came natural to me I think that it wasn't because I, my parents or any of this other stuff that you would think, well, that's why, you know, I started playing guitar. I just I started playing guitar and I was and I was good at it and I liked doing it and and I just continued to do it until eventually I found my own sort of style. You know, your mother is Cher yeah. and your father is Greg Allman. Uh huh. What did you learn about music from them? I don't know how much I learned about m music from them from my dad. You know, I just learned from a lot of watching the Allen Brothers play what it's like to experience greatness. You know, with, with my mom, it's more... You grow up in that way, so you're really exposed to culture and, and a lot of it, you know, and there's no real boundaries. And so that it's good and it's bad. Being exposed to a lot of those environments, I say, I'd say is the most influential thing that, you know, that um, growing up, uh, you know, with, with, with two that I know from the neighborhood... Um, that I grew up with and sort of seeing how distorted that consciousness is and I always like to sort of take my knowledge of you know history and the underworld and all these things and and, and just take their sort of uh, you know take their existence and essence and like funnel it through my lyric process and so what came out was 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 babes in abyss and it was all about you know sort of these superficial you know, women and, 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 and what'll happen in the underworld, uh, you know, when, when their sort of heart is being weighed against the scale. You know, I took the sort of Egyptian underworld scenario and, and, and then placed them in it and, and the outcome is not good for them. You know, so it's a, it's, a little, it's a little bit of topical songwriting. But I mean, I, that's my job to do that. I, it's yeah, my job to be, an antagonist, to, uh, to be an antagonist. You yeah, know? totally. Yeah, because totally. well, you're standing up. You're taking yeah. a stand, especially where you are in society because a lot of people, you know, look up to you and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're in a position where you, you have the strength Credible, to, yeah. yeah to stand up and say look this is wrong yeah. okay or i mean it is, it is what it is i don't know if it's wrong. i mean part of me it's also like the warhol things coming true it's like there's two ways to look at it because i i'm sort of you know i i'm i'm in both worlds too it's like since since i have since i have substance i'm able to sort of float through the superficial without really getting tainted by it you know what i'm saying um because i think that that's part of life too you know um but not in the way where where there's nothing if there's nothing there beneath uh parents who who are entertainers um provided me what does the term undercore mean and how does deadsy reflect that in sound and look undercore to me is that same sort of thing that i guess you could call what the Stooges and the Velvet Underground were, it's not so much a style of music, but more like whatever the current complete edge of, you know, the musical boundary is, that, that, that place that is the eternal edge, it's, you know, it's, it's, there's always, whenever, whenever that edge gets sort of diluted and, you know, those things become 
mainstream, well, then there's another, there's a new edge. You take your career into your own hands when you sort of do that. But that's what the Stooges did. That's what the Velvets did. That's what the Ramones did. So that's what I was going to do, you know. But right now, I guess what I'm into is like writing great songs, you know, uh, at this very moment. Like that, that's, that's what I've sort of had the realization of. It's like, you know, what, what league, what league do you want to play in? Or you want to be a successful band? Or, you know, do you, do you want to, you know, have songs that people will be listening to a hundred years exactly. from now. Exactly. With doing the Dead Z records and just the whole experience, you know, has definitely made me see what my potentials are and, you know, what my plans are. And, and you know, uh, I'm going to be making a solo record. And with, with what I'll be doing in music, I, I feel like I'm just getting sort of warmed up. And, and, I, and I feel like the sort of legacy of Dead Z in the last 10 years is a great way to sort of, you know, come with a nice amount of credibility. How do you feel Phantasmagore differs from Commencement? Uh, I think it's a more straight kind of rock album. Um, it's a little bit more up-tempo. It's just us sort of growing, you know, better songs. Uh, you know, I think all, all together, you know, from start to finish, um, a little bit more depth in the sound, a little bit more, you know, reverb and, and a little bit more... Um, you know, there's a sterility to commencement, which is which is good. It suits commencement well, but this one, you know, fantastic. Where we got in a little bit more of uh, textures. Tell me about the cover art. The concept for the cover uh, was just something that was very stark and a nice statement. You know, it says an idea. It says an attitude. It says, you know, like we don't give a fuck and we're gonna do shit our way till the end. Yeah. Um, and so. You know, I, I think that the cover's tough as nails. We took one, bef we took a first one, and it wasn't the right one. And then we, at the last second, found this girl on MySpace, who 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 was a fan of ours, who did all these weird little photo shoots of herself. At three in the morning, all of us <laughs> went up to her loft on on you know wherever it was on the corner of like Franklin and La Brea and Hollywood, and and we took that shot against a black psych, um, you know, against a back background, and then you know we went in and did sort of you know all the the different coloring and turning the stuff white you know we were inspired a lot by the transformer um album cover obviously which yeah. is probably you know we, we I, i'm inspired by the uh, art the covers that say you don't have to listen to the record man you just look at the cover and you get you, you know what the person's trying to communicate what inspired babes in the abyss well babes in abyss you know is a little bit of just you know girls that Blaring Out Show. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and today I'm here with founding member of Dead Z, Elijah Blue. So how's your day been going for you so far? You know, it's good, dude. It's just another day in Los Angeles, you know, living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Are you living the dream? Do you consider? I mean, yeah, dude. I'm, I, I, I don't, um, I, I think I always have been, you know, I mean, I, I don't think that living the dream doesn't mean a flawless existence i think mm -hmm. living the dream means just like you know you're living the life that you're supposed to live and you know you're doing the things that you're supposed to do and and you know you're having the peaks and the valleys that you're supposed to have so i, I think that that's uh you know i mean look we live in southern california yeah. it's sunny every day you know it's this is this town is the object of envy and you know covetousness of the entire world you know so i mean and, and 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 here we are so a lot of stuff i read about you i notice that you're very in touch with reality yeah. you don't you don't live in a fantasy world at all yeah man i i i, I try i guess because for me I, i've already experienced and live lived so many of the trappings you know a decade before i even picked up a guitar you know so i mean it, for me it's you know, for whatever reason, I was already initiated um, in in the sort of path of excess and 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 what that does and doesn't bring. You know, I, I think in the end, the final sort of analysis is that I was able to find a sort of way to where I could sort of have a foot in each world and 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 always, you know, like uh, you, you got to buy your own milk.